What up, y'all? Say hi to the paperwork princess. All right, so I'm gonna show you our load real quick. Turn the camera around. Okay, so we are going from Wisconsin to California, but not with the entire load. We've got some stops in Nebraska and Colorado and still working to put the rest of the load together. But as you can see, we have six large units on it. Hey guys, this is a two-part video. So watch till the end to get the second part of the mindset that it takes to survive out here if you're coming from something like United Road or a union job to the freedom of the open road. Because if you don't have the right mindset, you will not make it. So watch till the end. Guys, I apologize again for the bouncing. I just don't have a good camera bracket that absorbs all of the bounce in this uh, in this truck. So anyway, I know there's a lot of questions going on out there about how's the this whole virus issue affecting car hauling and it has definitely had an effect. Uh, a lot of guys that have just shut down and that's okay if that's what you want to do there's nothing wrong with that but you don't have to at least not at this point uh, we have not been classified as non-essential the orders of the states that are closed to normal traffic like I read a news article a couple days ago where Texas is not allowing anybody to come in from Louisiana except for the essential personnel and that includes transportation professionals like you and I. Now here's the thing you've got to understand about dealing with an economy the way it is right now. You're going to have to change your strategy. I came back out on the 20th. I was home for I don't know, four or five days, whatever it was. And during the time I was out prior to that, I was all mid-states. I wasn't on either coast. The drivers that are running on the coast are the ones that are most affected right now by this, this shutdown. Um, businesses that are coastal states are shut down more so from what I've seen in the car hauling industry than the states that are central states. <clears throat> we did lose two loads back to back last week, midweek. We were in Tyler, Texas and scheduled to pick up two short, like one pick, one drop type loads. They were paying well. Um, not the type of work I normally do because of the, the overall pay for the load isn't what I like to see for a gross bottom line on a load. But, they weren't bad. You know, still doing a thousand bucks in a day, but having to do a little bit of deadheading between the loads, between the picks and drops. Um, I think I did like a 170 mile deadhead between two of the loads, which is something that I just never do because my loads are constantly rolling. Uh, I'm almost never completely empty. It's, it's very rare. So, when we came back out on the 20th, we changed our strategy just a little bit. We decided we were going to stay a little closer to home, which means that the gravy picking, one here, one there, isn't as practical when you're not putting as many miles on. And we kind of wanted to see how things were going to go with this whole uh, the shutdown concerns and fears and so we went from uh, Tennessee we went from Chattanooga to Jacksonville Mississippi from Jacksonville over into Louisiana Baton Rouge area
area from Baton Rouge to Tyler, Texas, from Tyler, Texas up to Indianapolis, uh, Indiana, I believe it was. Um, from there, all the way up to Green Bay, Wisconsin, Green Bay back down to uh, Winnemac, Indiana, which is where we're pulling out of now. So, we are now on our way to California. Crazy as that may seem. However, what we have is going up near Weed, California, up in the mountains, in smaller towns, away from the major virus outbreak epicenters. We're doing everything we can to take immune uh, supplements, things that will increase your immune system, uh, just make you more able to fight any type of sickness, just common good health practice try to get plenty of sleep, eat healthy, um, and we're taking supplements just, just to help boost and build our immune system. Lots of vitamin C, echinacea, garlic, pills, uh, little, little capsules, things like that. It's good for your health regardless of whether or not it may have an effect on this virus concern. Now, back to the topic though. So we have, up until this run, which we're kind of back to the normal style run, we have changed our strategy a little bit. And what I mean by that is, if you've been following this channel, you know that I rarely do one pick, one drop lows just because I don't like the rates per mile per unit. And normally they just don't pay well enough to be worth it. However, we have found enough to where we have averaged $3 a mile on everything we've been hauling since we came back out and that's pretty decent we were running in the mid to high two dollar range in the first part of the month before i went home uh with paperwork princess back to dispatching we were we were doing really well so the virus has not had really a negative impact financially on my truck anyway in the car hauling industry. We've just changed our strategy up a little bit, continued running hard. Uh, the thing about car hauling is you really don't come in contact with a lot of people. Uh, not nearly as much as someone working a nine to five job dealing with the public. Uh, you know, we just, we, we really come into direct physical contact with a few people. So this doesn't mean there's no risk. But it is a very rough road and a reduced risk. Now, here's the other reason for this video. And this has nothing to do with the virus concerns right now. This is for those of you who are looking at getting into the business in general. Not necessarily right today, not right now, not anything to do with the virus. Just back to normal business. If you are an experienced car hauler, but your experience has been union or it has been large company like United Road, uh, any of the other large carriers where you are used to doing a lot of one pick, one drop, quick, easy. Um, you know, everybody likes it, but it will make a lazy driver out of you and it will affect the way you think and what you expect in the industry when you come out by your truck and decide to do your own thing. This is critical for you to understand. If you're used to a consistent system where you're just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth doing the same old thing every day and it's all quick easy stuff and you've never had to look at your dollar per mile, you just run based on wherever your dispatch sends you and you can draw your paycheck regularly, then you need to consider seriously the fact that you're gonna to have to readjust your thinking and your expectations if you have the desire to succeed. Now, I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. Y'all know that we provide a dispatch service. We. Provide this dispatch service to multiple drivers who own one truck, get into the business, are looking to start their own business up, to succeed, to make money, 
and they think they're going to come into the business and continue doing business as usual. And I'm going to tell you that they're, you or they are into a, you're, you're in for a rough, rude awakening, either financially or change of the way you do business, one or the other. It doesn't matter which way it affects you. We were dispatching for a guy, and I'm not trying to throw anybody under the bus, so I'm not naming any names, but this is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. We had a guy sign on under our dispatch company as a nice stinger rig, uh, pulling a, a, a Boydston 70 car trailer, um, three car head rack on his truck. Good solid older rig. And he's used to doing the United Road type, uh, one pick, one drop, quick, easy type work. And he expects that that's what he's going to be able to do out here consistently. And I, I, I don't know whether the United Road type drivers, and I'm just using United Road because they're a large company and everybody knows who they are. There's a lot of others out there. Uh, most of them are not that large, but there's a lot of them out there doing the same type of work. He expects to be able to continue doing one pick, one drop type loads with no deadheading between them. Um, absolutely refuses to do 30 to 40 miles to pick up a load. Just He just thinks that's awful. And that is not the way this business works. When you have your own authority and you're getting into the business. Now, you may down the road be able to build some contracts to where you can do that type of work if you like the cheap freight. That's okay. But if you really want to make the best money possible, you're going to have to work for it. And you're going to have to have an open mindset about following the money and hauling what pays. I've said that a thousand times if I've said it once. You have to follow the money and haul what pays. And if that means a little running around, if that means you put three or 400 miles in, getting your entire load put on, and you're going to go all the way across country, then you're still going to be able to make good money and you're going to have a good load on your truck. Now, obviously, you're not going to put three or 400 miles on and haul a one-day load. That wouldn't make sense. So we dispatched him a small load. It was only five 2500 series pickup trucks. And any Stinger operator out there knows that's a normal everyday load. We put them on our trucks all the time. I can put that on my seven car control. And it's nowhere near as flexible. That's a full size Stinger rig. He said, that it was too big. He said it wouldn't fit on his truck and trailer. He said he didn't think his hydraulics were designed to handle that type of weight. So I don't know what type of background experience the gentleman had, but he obviously didn't stretch his skill level. It didn't, um, it didn't teach him how to car haul anything but the little cookie cutter, quick, easy, back and forth type rail yard type loads that just those are not what's out here open to the general public I say general public as the the open load board guys that are, are running under their own authority pre-contract phase of their business and he turned it down now this was on a Friday and he canceled that load after we had booked it and Friday evening, everybody knows that has any experience in this business, you're going to be lucky to put together a full load. Now, there was one on the board. It was eight cars, eight smaller, lightweight cars, 20 cents a mile, guys, 20 cents a mile. That is an absolute insult to any transportation professional. And we've always laughed about guys that would take that kind of garbage because... You don't have to. You do not have to haul that kind of a load to stay in business. It's, it's, you just don't have to. But they always disappear off the board. We always figure somebody must be really desperate or, frankly, really um, business illiterate. I'll put it that way. So, we 
telling him, well, you know, we'll look, but it's most likely going to be first thing Monday morning before we can really start finding you anything good when the brokers start opening up again. We all know there's some brokers open on the weekend, some that you can get a hold of, but where he was at, it was either some one pick, one drop stuff and, and not enough to put together a load on the weekend, or it was a, uh, that cheap junk insult of a load. Now by Monday morning, they had raised that price significantly. I actually got it up to uh, 2400 bucks for that load. Now that made it a, almost 50 cents a mile load, and that made it worth the effort. And he got really, really lucky because he was able to get that load at that rate. But here's what he doesn't realize. The load he passed up, he would have already had it delivered. And if I recall correctly, it was a, like a $3,000 load. And then we had him another $3,500 load lined up that he was going to be able to haul. So but, now the number, that's not right. He had about $5,500 worth of freight that he would have had delivered at the same point at which he was able to deliver his $2,400 load. I don't know what he's thinking. He doesn't want to talk to me about it. Uh, I've tried to reach out to him and he just doesn't want to talk. So the point I'm trying to make, guys, is if you're getting into this business, you're going to have to have a different understanding than one pick, one drop, always. This is not a lazy driver business. It just isn't. You're not going to make a living, not a good one anyway, hauling that kind of freight. So already in less than a week, the gentleman's lost 3500 bucks over his decision to not haul a standard, normal Stinger rig load. So I called Boydston, and I spoke with Mr. Rob Boydston himself, and I asked him about this particular model of trailer, and again, I'm not trying to throw anybody under the bus, so I'm not throwing any names out there, but I asked Mr. Boydston what that trailer was designed to carry, that trailer truck-trailer combination. He said, we built that truck and trailer with six pickup trucks on it. Depending on the truck, you got to be careful about your weight. He said he has actually seen guys get really creative and get seven pickup trucks. Highly unlikely, uh, almost it's going to be a fact that it wasn't legal. It's was probably overweight and overheight. We're only talking about physically being able to get it on the truck in the trailer for seven. But he said he's he's known in the truck that truck and trailer was designed to be able to haul six full-size pickups. We're not talking 3,500s. We're not talking lifted. We're not talking crew cab long wheel bed, long wheel base, but still six full-size. Now five crew cab long wheel base you can put on that truck and trailer according to the Boydston manufacturing plant. Mr. Boydston himself. I don't personally have any experience with a Boydston trailer. My experience is primarily Cottrell, but what he told me was they built that trailer to compete with Cottrell to be able to do more than Cottrell. And if you can do more than Cottrell, you're doing really good because Cottrell is a good trailer, a fantastic trailer. So I realize there's a learning curve when you go out and you buy your own truck and trailer and you're not familiar with it which is why my company provides the technical support. And it's it's all a part of the conversations that I have with guys before they sign up. If you call and talk to me, you, you know this to be true. We offer technical support. If you're trying to put a load on your trailer, you're not sure how to do it, you call me or you call your trainer if you went through a training program. Um, and we can help you fit that load on your trailer in a way that's legal and safe. If you don't avail yourself of that service and you just simply say, nope, can't do it, won't fit, you are selling yourself short on what your equipment is capable of doing.
which also means you're selling yourself short on what you are capable of earning and putting in the bank. So if you prefer to haul $2,400 loads that you're going to spend four or five days handling as compared to $5,500 in that same time frame, well, that's your choice. You own the truck, you are your own business owner, and we work for you as a dispatcher. So we had a conversation with this particular driver. We just had to say, look, if you want to haul the cheap stuff, then let us know, and we'll book you the cheap stuff. But if you really want to make money, you're going to have to let us do our job that we are experienced and well capable of doing. And trust us when we tell you, this is a normal load. We even sent this gentleman loading diagrams and pictures of loads of five trucks or more on a trailer like his. Refused to even try to load it. So the point of this entire video is just this. If you're either brand new to the business or you're just getting into the business or you are transferring from a union type or a, uh, a rail yard type manufacturing plant direct one pick one drop type loads or one pick several drop for deliveries all quick and easy cars you need to understand that you're going to have to adjust Wrap your mind around the fact that you're going to have to do things a little differently if you're going to succeed and truly make the kind of money that's, that's available out here and truly be able to use your equipment as it was designed to be used. If you're not willing to do that, then this is probably not the business for you to be in because you, there is a very, very high chance that you will do exactly as I've seen a number of drivers do, and that is fail financially in this business because of your inability to wrap your mind around the way things need to be done out here and your unwillingness to listen to professional dispatchers who are good at their job and will almost never send you a vehicle or a load that will not fit on your trailer. Anyway, that's my rant for the day frustrating when you know a guy can do so much better and he's not willing to not willing to succeed not willing to put the effort and the time the energy into succeeding anyway y'all keep the greasy side down keep between the lines and stay safe out there